Hi guys, welcome back to Glam Girl Row. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful Sunday so far, and I hope it got a little bit better when you tuned into today's content. We are talking about voting and the importance of voting and why everyone needs to get out and vote this upcoming election. Even if you just turn 18, we're going to talk about some ways to get past the, the pressure that you may be going through, the nervousness, and all of that in today's video. So if you are interested in learning about why voting matters, why your voice matters, stay tuned. This video is intended for new voters who have just turned 18 or who are just registering to vote for the very first time or those who are reluctant to participate in this upcoming election. I am here today to tell you if you are nervous about voting, if you are having doubts about voting, just continue to meditate and pray or whatever it is that you do to kind of balance and resurface yourself and get ready to vote. Every vote is going to count in this upcoming election and we need you and we need you to continue to advocate and encourage others to vote. So I just wanted to put that out there. I know if you are younger and this is your first time voting, this is a hell of a time to be voting, right? And you may be thinking, well, I'm just 18, I'm just 19. I, I'm not even really an adult yet. You may still live at home. All these things may kind of ponder through your mind, but you will soon be working. You will soon want to own a home. You will soon have certain things that need to be addressed through policies and laws. And it's important that you go out and make sure your voice is heard by voting and selecting the right people in these positions to be able to pass things that are needed for you, your community, and our nation. So I just wanted to put that out there. I know when I was 18, I registered to vote. It was really simple. Um, you know, we are going through a pandemic and that may seem like it makes things a little bit challenging at this time, but there are still plenty of resources out there to get you started on how to register and to make sure that you finish to the finish line on completing your registration. So do not let that discourage you either. Um, but when I registered to vote, it was just when I updated my driver's license when I turned 18 they asked me are you interested you know in being a registered voter and I said yes and that's how it went from there I got my voter registration card in the mail but for you guys I'm going to go through the steps on what you need to do I do live in Michigan so I'm going to go over how you register to vote here in Michigan off of our Secretary of State's website. Everything that I reference in this video that came from a website is going to be in the description box below for you to review further. Um, for those of you who live in a different state, I have you covered as well. Um, I'm going to link that website in the description box below as well, but it's really easy to go through. You just select your state and it brings you directly to that state. Um, I, I'm guessing it's their Secretary of State as well form a website um, comparison to Michigan's. And then it walks you right through the steps. I tested it a few times selecting various states to make sure that it took you to where you need to go to and it worked and it is fact checked and it is accurate so i just wanted to make sure you guys knew that too that all of this information that i'm providing for you is easy peasy it works it's legit and it will take you to where you need to go so yes let's talk about this a little bit more um voting why does it matter to vote? It matters, like I mentioned, um, because you are able to go out and have a say in who represents our country. And not just our country. You are able to select higher officials who are in these positions within the state, within our, I'm sorry, people walk by and they see me recording. It's like, hi, how are you? 
Um, but you are able to select officials within the state and in your township or in your city. So it goes all the way from local, state to federal. And um, that is why you should be interested in knowing on who is holding these positions and what their values are, their beliefs, and what they plan to do for the people. Um, remember that when these folks get into office, they are representing the people. We are selecting them to do good for us and it's no other way. Um, so sometimes that gets a little confused when some of these people get in these positions and they're doing so much for only those in their network, only those who will benefit and reap um, closely to them. That is not how it's supposed to be. But I'm not here to sway you on any political party view. I'm just here to make sure that you know you need to get out and vote. You need to make sure that your vote is counted and you need to vote correctly um, so that you know it isn't disregarded or anything like that. And that to me is why it's important as well. It's a privilege to vote, right? You were able to turn 18. If you are eligible to vote, you should vote. It took a lot for everyone in this country to have the right to vote, to have access to voting. Um, and I think you should honor that by continuously going out to vote, not just for, you know, large elections like this. Pay attention to what's going on in your community when those smaller ones come up and, you know, no one's really talking about it. Make sure you go out to vote for those things as well. Do not just vote one time you know, every four years when it comes up for the bigger ones that are more campaigned and advertised, that is important too. Not saying it's not because it is, but it's important to be what I'll call a regular voter, voting all the time, right? We're not gonna be that person that only goes to church on Easter and Mother's Day. We're gonna be that person that goes faithfully. We're gonna be the person that is always, you know, participating and being aware and staying informed. That is the best way to use your privilege to vote and to use it as an opportunity to make change within your community. Um, and I'm gonna keep saying that, making change within your community, making change within your state, and making change for your country. Um, so yes, one thing that I also wanted to address is a lot of older generations view us younger generations, I'm in my 20s, so a lot of older generations view us as lazy, that we, do not want to be bothered with politics, that we do not go out to vote, and we need to prove them wrong. We do. We need to prove them wrong, and we need to stand up for what we believe in. And I know younger people believe in more than just climate change. I hear that all the time from older people. Like, it was so nice seeing the younger people, they stood up for climate change. I know that younger people care about other things that are happening in this country, whether it's racial injustice, education, um, equal access to food and housing, and having ability to meet your basic needs for all, taxes, wages. I know that young people may be focused on climate change, but that is not what they're just gonna label us to um, represent. It is so many other things that we need to pay attention to, as well as you're gonna be going into the working class soon. It may not seem like you're gonna be doing it right now, but you will soon be a person and your tax dollars will be going to certain fundings and you wanna make sure that it's going to the right thing. You wanna make sure what you're investing in this soil here in this country is actually growing and reaping, right? you're able to reap the benefits. So let's change that. Let's change that stereotype that is labeled on younger people that we aren't gonna participate, that they feel like we're not gonna be involved. Also, for more minority communities, please, 
please, please, please go out and vote. If your family, it seems like they just do not go out to participate in voting, encourage them to go out to vote as well. Like I said, this is intended for that young voter who is doing this for the first time. Sometimes it's like, well, my parents do not vote, so why should I type of thing, which is reasonable. You kind of, you do what you grow up around, you know, um, that's what you're used to. But this is the opportunity to even encourage those around you that are eligible and um, have the opportunity to do so and to encourage them to go out to vote. And I just want to make sure that all of you know, no matter who you're voting for, okay, I'm gonna make it clear who I support. You will be able to tell throughout this video. I'm not gonna say any names, but you will have a sneak peek towards the end who I support, who I'm rocking with. But I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you that you, as a young person, need to make sure your voice is heard. You need to make sure that you cast in your ballot. You need to make sure that it is received and counted for. That is your job in these upcoming months. So you have September, October, November 3rd is election day. So we need to get ready and to be prepared I felt like right now, today is August 23rd, was the perfect time to do this video because it would give you enough time to register if you are still not and to do research and to ask me questions. I am here to also give support to you virtually. So if you have questions, please comment in the comment section below. I don't want you to feel discouraged or to feel like, well, you know, she talked about voting, but I still have questions. If you have questions, leave your comments below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. That is the whole um, focus of this video. So I'm going to look down a little bit because I have my notes here on um, Secretary of State's website for Michigan. And we're gonna walk through those steps. Remember, if you do live in Michigan, you're watching this video, that's perfect because this link is gonna be accessible to you in the description box. So let's see. So it says registering to vote, step one, figuring out if you're eligible or not. So in order to be eligible to vote, um, to register to vote, you must be a Michigan resident at the time you register and a resident of your city and or township for at least 30 days when you vote, um, a United States citizen, at least 18 years of age when you vote, not currently serving a sentence in jail or prison. Okay, so that is how you figure out whether or not you're eligible. And then also, I feel like there was a little bit of conflict growing up, I used to hear that, I don't know, maybe it was just something I heard about, but it was it was like if you did not have a state ID card or a driver's license, they tried to make it harder for you to have access to register. But here in Michigan, you have multiple ways to prove your residency within the state. And it does not just have to be a state ID card or driver's license. That is option number one. But you can also show a current utility bill, a bank statement, a paycheck or government check or other government documentation. And I feel like that can include like a military ID, you know, if you're serving right now. But if you do not have, you know, those forms of identification, like the state ID and the driver's license, do not feel discouraged. As long as you can show something to me, showing where you reside, you've lived there, um, you know, your name, things like that, your date of birth, I think you're all set. Okay, so after that, you will fill out the application form, which you can do all of this online. You will submit your application and then the city and or township clerk processes your application form 
and from there you are registered. Now, if you have any questions throughout this process, you are more than welcome to contact your clerk's office. So that is your right. So if you have questions on, okay, when is my voter registration card coming in the mail? Um, did the process go through? Things like that. Um, also like your polling place location, that is their job to tell you this information. So do not feel, you know, scared or nervous to ask them a question. Ask as many questions as you need to make sure you know where you're going, um, you know that you're approved to vote, things like that. Do not wait to figure this out. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was some form of a conflict and it's kind of closer to the election day. Do it. Um, and good enough timing to confirm that you're ready to go. Okay, so that's what you need to do if you reside here. Um, and I forgot to say, that's on michigan.gov, but like I said, it'll be linked below. The next one is vote.gov. So as soon as you go to vote.gov, all you do is it brings up a tab for you and you just select your state. So I just put Connecticut. If you live in Connecticut, you'll press the button here that says find out how to register. And I'm doing it right now to confirm this for about the 20th time to make sure. And it says start your online registration on Connecticut's election website. And it takes you directly to their Secretary of State website for Connecticut. So I confirmed it for, like I said, the umpteenth time because I want to make sure it works for everybody who needs access to that form to register. So um, I tried about 15 different states, you know, kind of all through west to east coast and down south. I just wanted to make sure everything was legit for you. Okay. What else? What else? I also wanted to share that um, a big question you may wonder as well, should I vote in person or should I vote absentee? Now that is completely up to you. And it's, you know, if you feel that you're more safe dropping your absentee ballot in the Dropbox um, location close to you, mailing it if you want we all know what's going on with mail right now with the postal service but that is up to you here's my advice if you are planning to do absentee um, ballot voting so if you're planning to go that method make sure as soon as you receive your absentee ballot that you fill it out right away do not wait and hold on to your absentee ballot Make sure when you get it, you take your time, of course, when making your selection so you don't have to do like a redo, which is going to take up more time. Take your time, make your selections, read through the information thoroughly, and then get ready to send that back out. If you can, if you have access to, I would say drop it in a Dropbox location. So when I did the primary election here in Michigan, what me and my husband did is we filled out our absentee ballots and we took it directly to our clerk's um, office to put it in the Dropbox. We confirmed it was received, okay? So make sure you do that. Make sure you track that it was received, accepted, etc. Do not just send it off and never think about it again. That you do not want to do that because um, I think consciously you want to know that your vote it your vote was counted for and that your information was received. So that's option one. If you're planning to vote in person, um I, I am, we're voting in person. Um, at first, like I said, I did absentee voting for the primary, but in person is what I'm doing for November. This is a crucial time to make sure that my vote is counted and that it is received. So, you know, I'm getting up early. I think my polling place opens at either seven or 8 a.m., one of the two, 
but 8 a.m. for sure, and I'm gonna be there a few minutes early. I'm gonna have my mask, I'm gonna have gloves, I'm gonna have sanitizer, and you know, I'm just, I'm gonna try to limit myself from touching things, being as safe as possible during this pandemic and keeping my space in distance, but I am going in person to vote to ensure that my vote is counted for. Like I said, I cannot tell you how to vote, which way you should vote, but I'm encouraging you if you're doing it absentee that you do not wait and you get it done quickly. If you are voting in person, I encourage you to make sure that you are still safe, that you are mentally prepared as well, depending on where you are. It may be some people trying to discourage you to vote, trying to intimidate you, but this is the time to get strong, to have faith and to go and still do your due diligence to vote. Make sure you do not fall into these scare tactics. Make sure that you, you know, talk to people if you are feeling nervous and scared to go out to some of these places that they're trying to intimidate certain groups. Talk, pray, go with a, a friend or family member if both of your schedules permit to do so, but get it done. Get it done and you will be okay. I am praying for all of you that you're safe when you go out to vote in this upcoming election. I pray that all of you are able to, you know, be able to cast in your voter ballots without having any issues or problems. But just know that what they're doing, trying to you know, make certain people feel uncomfortable and unsafe and even scared to go out to vote is for a reason. It's for a reason and you need to open your eyes to that. You need to open your eyes to that and say, hmm, why are they doing this? What's the purpose of this? And you should question it to the point that you get fired up to go out to vote, okay? Last thing I wanted to say on this video because I do not want it to be too, too long. That is not my goal. I just wanted to come on here to make the point. Last thing I wanted to say, please do not fall into that trap that your vote doesn't matter. Do not do it. If you think just because you are that one fish out of millions in the sea and that your, your vote does not matter, it does. I cannot stress that enough. Do not say, well, you know, I'm just one person out of, uh, out of many. Okay. Yes, you are. That is a valid point, but you're also that one person that can make a big difference in who we have leading our nation this upcoming year. You can be that person that makes or breaks the election so please go out and vote do not fall for the okie doke do not sit there and wait do not fall for people saying oh i'm not voting this time or oh i'm gonna put in a person who's not running all those weird things that happened in 2016 when people were putting people who didn't even run aka throwing away their vote selecting and falling for all these tactics that people were trying to put out on Hillary Clinton and saying that she did certain things. Stay awake. Stay awake and do not fall into this. Do not listen to fake news. Do not get your news off of certain platforms. You know what I mean? Do thorough research and know for yourself. If someone is telling you something, question it. If somebody is saying they believe in something, ask why. But whatever you do, make sure you go out and vote. Okay guys, so that was my spiel on voting and why you need to vote and why your voice matters. I hope this video was not too long for everybody, but I just wanted to come on to let you know that I am sending out good vibes to all of you that are gonna be participating. And I hope that if you have not voted yet ever before, that this will be the first time that you decide to vote. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Please make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys.